Welcome back to Between the Words and our reading of Our Revolution by Bernie Sanders. Today we'll be discussing Chapter 1 and Chapter 2. Chapter 1 is titled, How Do We Turn Out the Way We Do? And it discusses where Bernie Sanders started out as a, as a kid in Brooklyn, where his parents came from, you know, from Jewish family, getting away from the Nazis, World War II. And how they came to America with not even a nickel. Living in a small apartment, an apartment that when he later revisited uh, as an adult, he was surprised uh, that he'd had, he was so small. He didn't notice it when he was a kid. But he spent a long time playing on the streets with his brother, with other kids. You know, they had all sorts of games they would play, sports, stickball, baseball. Baseball's a big thing for them. Uh, but how they did it in the street, they had to come up with their own rules. You know, what happens when a car comes by? Strict rules on that. A um, ball goes underneath a car. You know, it's parked on the street. Um, that sort of thing. They came up with those rules, those ideas, all on their own. Because they were all trying to have fun. Yeah, they know who's the best and who's the worst. That goes with the territory. But the fact is that even as a kid, he found a way. He didn't realize it as a kid. He found a way to have a very democratic process. It wasn't work for everyone. Uh, also, in those formative years, he ended up going to camp. He was sent there one summer. He was supposed to go for four weeks. He came back after two because he was homesick. The next year, he was just supposed to go for two weeks because of the homesickness. He stayed for four that time. The third year, the final year, he stayed for six weeks and cried when they brought him home. <laughs> because of camp, he slowly fell in love with nature and you know, open spaces. The natural, you know, the, the, the world outside of the, you know, concrete cities that, you know, so many people are used to. It's because of that that fueled his potential to love places like Vermont. It's a very open and rural place. He's very quick to point out that uh, getting the streets, the snow plowed off the streets, is a major concern in Vermont. It will snow, and it will snow a lot. Another thing he goes on to discuss is that after high school, he went to college at the University of Chicago. And that's where he got involved with demonstrations. It was the 60s. It was a time of a lot of protesting. And that was because people were talking about issues and they had a lot of opinions. That's where he got uh, first got in touch with the uh, Liberty Union Party and started running a few things with them. Worked with a couple of unions, uh, a packing house union. Uh, he he genuinely worked on things because he saw places where there could be more equality. That the world around him wasn't functioning with the simple equilibrium that it did when he was out on the street. As a kid playing ball, if kids can pull it off on the street playing ball, why can't adults pull it off in the world as a whole? Through that, he got involved with several groups, and one of them got him to go to the March on Washington, led by Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. He's quick to point out, though, <clears throat> that. Uh, Get the right page. Um, that uh, you know, he he's a big follower of King, and not just on the civil rights front, but on the civil rights for everyone front. You know, just the general sense of equality. Um, Bernie writes, King was assassinated. Let us not forget, King was assassinated not in a civil rights demonstration, but in the fight for decent wages and working conditions for garbage collectors in Memphis, Tennessee garbage collectors. People who are just trying to take out the trash. Normal way we function 
in the developed world. He just wanted to pay for some people. He just wanted them to get paid a good wage. He got killed. So Bernie, Bernie stuck very close to the core ideas of Dr. King, trying to find equality for all and fair access to all, for all. Through that, he, after that, he ended up in Vermont, and he ended up finding himself in uh, a few uh, third-party meetings, like with the Liberty Union. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, that's where the Liberty Union comes in. Sorry, I misspoke that earlier. It was just other small groups. When he was in college with the Liberty Union Party pops in. That's chapter two, My Political Life in Vermont. And he goes from being this third-party fringe guy, which, okay, that, that's kind of derogatory almost, but it's true. He, he did these things, and these things like running for Congress in a third party, getting 2% of the vote, and then he'd run, he'd run again for something else, get 1% of the vote. At one point he made a uh, Senate run, the Liberty Union Party, his greatest turnout ever under that party, 6% of the vote. But they found out later that in Burlington, Vermont, he pulled 12% of the vote. Double the percentage area he got through the rest of the state. He was told that he could win the mayor's race and actually knock out a long-standing incumbent mayor. He ran. He won. Close margin. 12 points. Close enough for a recount. They did the recount. He got knocked down to ten point. He got knocked down to ten votes between him and the incumbent. And he, it was ten points in Bernie's favor. So he was mayor. That didn't stand for much because the city council would not work with him. The de Democrats and the Republicans were united to block every idea he had. They wanted it to seem like he was ineffectual and bring and bring the other guy right back in. Or someone else. Someone not him. Well, he did everything in his power outside of city council control to to make life in Burlington better. You know, a concert series and, you know, getting, like, known acts to come in. Some of these concert series still run to this day. You know, he tries to get the waterfront around the local lake you know, to be beautiful and accessible for everyone. You know, he he actually early on he got the uh, policeman's union on his side, uh, and during during that race, so that he had little things that kept helping his momentum. Uh, when it came time to the next set of elections, he would go out and he would campaign with a few with a few people who knew he knew they would support him and his initiatives. He went door to door with them, they went door to door as well. Their their elections in Burlington are in March, so that means they're doing the door knocking in January, February. Hard to win. So by the time that election was over he had enough people that were, you know, on his side in the city council office that Democrats and the Republicans had to work with him. They didn't have a choice anymore. They couldn't just band together and say no, because he he could break he could break their voting. Uh, and he did. He improved things enough to where he got mentioned in U.S. News and World Report as being one of the best mayors in the country. And this was the early 80s, but, you know, but, but still part of his resume. <laughs> I, I, I grew up in the early 80s. Um, from there, he got uh, pulled into another congressional race. 
And from that congressional race, it was in 1990, he got elected to U.S. Congress. And in Congress, he found himself as a continuing those same ideals that he had before, that he'd learned while reading so much in college. Because it wasn't a case of, I read it in the newspaper, being a satisfactory way to say, this my point is right. Um, newspapers had their own slants, so he, he would go out and he would find various sources. Yeah, made a point of continuing those notions of trying to find that that young kids playing outside equilibrium that he had found in his childhood. You know, people trying to band together and find a better a cause to make a better nation. He stuck to those principles that Dr. King had mentioned standing against war. And in 1991, he made a speech. One of his first speeches in Congress was actually against the, uh, the Gulf War when Iraq invaded Kuwait. So many nations had banded together to run Saddam Hussein out of Kuwait that Bernie Sanders is of the opinion that we've got so many of these developed nations and their modern war machines standing there waiting to retaliate. So many nations of the world united against one little nation. Surely, we can get what we want without firing a single shot. And it makes a lot of sense. You think that they could um, <clears throat> have de-escalated that situation in a different way with so much firepower sitting there. They didn't. Shooting war. You know, he stood against uh, things like NAFTA, things like DOMA. And he ended up running for con running for the other House of Congress, the Senate. And the day he announced that he was going to run for Senate, because he decided this when, when the senior senator from Vermont uh, announced his retirement, Bernie announced he was going to run for the seat the same day. Uh, Democratic leader Harry Reid announced his support for Bernie Sanders. This was in 2006. Chuck Schumer soon jumped in, also said the same. A young senator from Illinois, Barack Obama, not only professed his support, he showed up in Vermont to help. And when they did that, Bernie points out that they had so many people show up at this little chapel and twice as many people that the place could hold so half of them were outside. They had to do an impromptu, they both had to do impromptu speeches on the front doorstep and then go do the planned speeches inside. Um, but things continued along those, that path where everywhere he goes, he comes from this outsider position, but he ends up finding more and more people who are willing to stand with him. His ideas, though he might be considered on the fringe, his ideas always find a firm rooting in the populace. His ideas aren't actually fringe. His ideas are the ideas of the people. Equality? Equality? Fairness? Why wouldn't we want those things for everyone? So, he's got a real momentum, and we're just now talking about him hitting the Senate. Oh, I wonder what we're going to discuss next time. But until then... I'll keep reading. You keep reading too. We'll discuss it down below in the comments. Feel free to like and subscribe. I'll have more coming up shortly. Try to do this about it once a week. And until the next time, we'll keep reading and finding what's between the words.